Have you ever wondered how a boneless body would look? It would be a shapeless bag, making it difficult to move from one place to another. Our skeletal system gives shape to our body, and the muscular system helps in movement. The adult skeletal system consists of 206 bones and a few cartilages. Did you know that a newborn baby has around 300 bones, which fuse as the baby grows, resulting in 206 bones in an adult? Both bone and cartilage are specialized connective tissues. However, bone has a hard, non-pliable matrix due to the presence of rich calcium salts, while cartilage has a pliable matrix due to chondroitin salts. The skeletal system has two main divisions, the axial and the appendicular skeleton. The axial skeleton includes the basic central framework of our body, while the appendicular skeleton includes the bones of the limbs and their supporting girdles. The axial skeleton consists of 80 bones, which include the skull, vertebral column, ribs and sternum. The skull has two sets of bones, cranial and facial. The eight cranial bones fuse to form a cranium or brain box, while the 14 facial bones form the face. The skull also includes a U-shaped hyoid bone and two ear ossicles, one on either side. Each ear ossicle consists of three tiny bones, malleus, incus and stapes. The skull also has a large hole called the foramen magnum through which the spinal cord after emerging from the brain continues into the vertebral column. The skull articulates with the vertebral column with the help of two occipital condyles. The vertebral column has three main functions. It protects the spinal cord, supports the head, and serves as the point of attachment for the ribs. It consists of 26 differently shaped bones called vertebrae. Each has a central hollow portion called the neural canal through which the spinal cord passes. The vertebrae are divided into five groups according to the region they occupy. The neck region has seven cervical vertebrae followed by 12 thoracic, 5 lumbar, 1 sacral and 1 coccygeal. In adults, the sacral and coccygeal vertebrae unite to form the sacrum and coccyx respectively. In fact, the first two cervical vertebrae, called the atlas and the axis, allow nodding and rotating movements of the head. There are 12 pairs of ribs, where each rib is a flat bone attached dorsally to the thoracic vertebrae. The first seven pairs of ribs are called true ribs as they are attached dorsally to the thoracic vertebrae and ventrally to the sternum by means of hyaline cartilage. The eighth, ninth and tenth pairs of ribs are called false ribs or vertebrochondral ribs. These ribs are not attached directly to the sternum, but they join the seventh rib with the help of hyaline cartilage. The last two pairs are called floating ribs, as they are not attached to the sternum. The ribs, along with the thoracic vertebrae and sternum, form the rib cage which protects vital organs like the heart and lungs. Thus, the axial skeleton consists of 80 bones, including the skull, vertebral column, ribs and sternum. 
The remaining 126 bones form the appendicular skeleton, which includes the bones of the limbs and their supporting girdles. Interestingly, each limb consists of 30 bones. The bones of the forelimb or hand include the humerus, radius and ulna, eight carpals or wrist bones, five metacarpals or palm bones and fourteen phalanges. The bones of the hind limb or leg consist of the femur or thigh bone, tibia and fibula, seven tarsals or ankle bones, five metatarsals and fourteen phalanges. Another bone called the patella or kneecap is found on the ventral side of the knee. The remaining six bones form the girdle bones which articulate with the limb bones to the axial skeleton. There are two girdles, the pectoral or shoulder girdle and the pelvic or hip girdle. Each half of the pectoral girdle consists of a flat, large, triangular scapula and a curved, slender, clavicle or collarbone. The scapula is situated between the second and seventh ribs on the dorsal side of the thorax. It has a slightly elevated ridge called a spine, which projects as a flat expanded process called the acromion. Below the acromion is a cup-shaped cavity called the glenoid cavity, into which fits the head of the humerus to form the shoulder joint. In addition, the acromion articulates with one end of the clavicle to form the acromioclavicular joint, while the other end connects to the upper part of the sternum. The pectoral girdle plays an important role in the movement of the arms. The other girdle is the pelvic girdle, which consists of two coxal or hip bones. Each coxal bone consists of three bones, the ileum, ischium and pubis. These bones fuse to form a cavity called the acetabulum into which fits the head of the femur or thigh bone. The two halves of the hip bones connect dorsally to the sacrum, while these bones meet ventrally with the help of fibrous cartilage to form the pubic symphysis. The pelvic girdle not only supports the limb bones, but also protects the abdominal organs like the reproductive organs and urinary tract. In fact, the female pelvis is wider than the male pelvis to facilitate childbirth. The bones of our body articulate in a way that provides a framework to our body, protect our internal organs and help in body movements. The point at which two bones or a bone and a cartilage make contact is called a joint. These joints play an important role in the movement of the bony parts of our body as well as in locomotion. However, their movability depends on various factors such as the force exerted by the muscles, weight and act of fulcrum, where the joint acts as the fulcrum. Depending on how bones are connected to each other, joints are classified into three major types, fibrous, cartilaginous and synovial. Fibrous joints do not allow any movement and are also referred to as immovable joints. For example, the cranial bones, which fuse end to end with the help of fibrous connective tissues to form the cranium. Another type is the cartilaginous joint, in which bones are joined with the help of cartilage. This joint is found between the adjacent vertebrae in the vertebral column, which permits limited movement. 
The last type is the synovial joint, which is characterized by the presence of a lubricating fluid called synovial fluid filled in a synovial cavity between the articulating surfaces of the two bones. These joints allow a considerable degree of movement. There are several types of synovial joints, such as the ball and socket joint between the humerus and scapula, hinge joint between the ulna and humerus, pivot joint between the atlas and axis vertebrae, gliding joint between the carpals and the saddle joint between the carpal and metacarpal of the thumb. In this way, the skeletal and muscular systems function in a perfectly coordinated manner. However, over a period of time, these systems may begin to show wear and tear or exhibit some disorders. One such disorder is myasthenia gravis, which is an autoimmune disorder that affects the neuromuscular junction characterized by fatigue, weakening and paralysis of the skeletal muscles. Muscular dystrophy is also common and is characterized by the progressive degeneration of skeletal muscle fiber. It is considered a genetic disorder. Another disorder, tetany, causes rapid spasms in the muscles due to calcium deficiency, whereas arthritis is the inflammation of joints, a disorder commonly seen in elderly people. Elderly people also suffer from osteoporosis, which is characterized by a decrease in bone mass, which increases the chances of fractures. It is caused by a decrease in the level of estrogen and is therefore more common in women. Gout is another disorder which results in the inflammation of joints due to the accumulation of uric acid crystals. It is essential to observe a healthy diet and lifestyle so that the skeletal and muscular systems can function efficiently.